Sisters Uptown Bookstore in, in, in Uptown Manhattan. We got Lee Morgan 1, Lee Morgan 2, and Lee Morgan 3. My buddy Larry, Th Larry Thomas from North Carolina, who interviewed Helen Morgan, who shot Lee Morgan. No, it's not I shot Mr. Lee, uh, saw, but how are you? Greetings, brother. How are you? So good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah, you, man. You so you was in you out there on on in La La Land. Tell me about yeah, that La La Land, baby. This trip was very productive. Uh, I had a great time. Uh, the, the weather was perfect, 80 degrees, you know, in February, which I thought was great. And um, I actually had a chance to um, to talk to some Hollywood people who were interested in doing a movie. Oh, what a, that would be some yeah, movie. On the Lee Morgan story, yeah. They, 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 well, they said they had planned to do the movie even before this documentary came out. Oh. But I'm up okay. here to do a book signing. I'm also up here to uh, attend the premiere. They act what they call a theater premiere. Okay. I put in the movie. It's, the movie is called I Called Him Morgan. Yes. And everyone was in Toronto. I went to Toronto. And I actually did a book signing in Toronto, too, at a very nice place called The Different Book. Book list. The you know, different book list. Tell us about in, that. In Toronto. Oh, it was a nice place, man. Um, a brother from Trinidad and his wife was from, I think his wife was from Barbados. Mm -hmm. They ran the store. And at that time, uh, what's his name? Danny Glover was in town. Oh, okay. And Danny Glover walked in the store and they interviewed him, but I had to wait till they were finished to do that. But um, I, they were telling me that. Whenever somebody like Denzel would come to town, they would send somebody over there to buy some books because I guess he didn't want to walk in there and be mobbed. But I had a very good time in Toronto. I saw the movie in Toronto. Uh, this will be the second time I've No, this will be, yeah, this will be the third time. What is I've the audience the reaction in uh, Los Angeles? Well, I did I actually, I'm, I'm in two films. Okay, you, you, you did, you mentioned yeah, that to Wilmington me. Wilmington on Fire, which was about the 1898 Wilmington, North Carolina massacre, which I've done research on. That movie was screened at what was called the Pan-African Film Festival in Los Angeles. Okay. So they've been doing it, uh, this was the 25th one. And I, I was out there for that film, which actually won an award. It won the um, First Future Best Director Award. So that's why I was out there for that. What was it? Since I was out there, I would do, uh, you know, book signing with uh, the lady who shot me. You, you know, I tell people many times. I said that uh, you, you walked up on this. Is that true? Right, yeah, it fell in my lap. She was a student of mine, and I interviewed her. Um, I, you know, as a, I'm up jazz radio now, so I've been doing this since 1978. And a way of introducing myself, I work, I've been working at this station for about, oh, about five or six years. I actually worked for them for them for 10 years, WHQR, which was the public radio station. Um, and I was a jazz, the late jazz announcer. But as a way of introducing myself to the class, I would hand out a bio of me. Because I wanted them to use that as a guide right. to write their own bio. And Helen. when she read it, she said, oh, I love jazz. Oh, okay. My husband is a jazz musician. Oh. So I said, really? Hey, brother. So I said, I said, really? I said, what was your husband's name? <laughs> and her last name was Helen Morgan. It struck, so it struck. I couldn't think of any other musician with that last name. Yes. So I said, she said, Lee. I said, Lee Morgan? The trumpet player? And she said, yes, that was my husband. So immediately, I, you know, a whole lot of stuff was spinning through my mind. And I said, well, um, I'd like to, I sure would like to interview you one day, is what I said to her. And so she kind of looked at me kind of funny, like she said, well, I'll think about it. So it took her about six years. Six years? Yeah. And wow. She had been ill, you know. Yes. And I think this is what she wanted to leave. I guess it's a lasting legacy. You, you know, when I saw, saw the movie, oh boy, I was really spellbound by this movie. Oh really? my goodness. I, I, well, it's been getting positive uh, reviews. 
a lot of people like it, so you're not alone. You're getting very positive. As a matter of fact, um, I haven't seen a negative one yet. Um, if you go online, if you Google, I call them Morgan, you, this, I call them Morgan.com, the site will pop up. And it will actually show you where the screenings are and the whole nine yards. It's, 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 been every, it's going everywhere. It's going to be in Washington. On the 31st, back are you back enjoying, are, 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 my friend, are you enjoying this? I'm having fun. You are, what way are, 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 are you having fun? I'm having a whole lot, lot of fun because, I mean, never in a thousand years, I think I told you this before, did I would ever think that the interview that I conducted with her would have been, would have been involved in it. And then people will become interested in it too because, uh, you know, ah, that's another musician, you know, but in this particular case, she, this gentleman wasn't another musician. And I saw this when he was doing the, um, he was playing in, in, in the band, you know, he was right. playing. I mean, he was, oh, I said, oh, Lee. Right, 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 right. Yeah, he was a hot cat, man. He was one of the hottest cats out here. And he's so, he's still selling a lot of albums. He sold a lot of albums and he's still selling them. Still Does he have a big following overseas? Everywhere. He has a big following all over the world. Oh, awesome. How are you? They, they, well, they love him overseas. Oh, well, this music is accepted more overseas than it is here yeah, anyway. But his leg is, but he still lives on, right? Overseas. Oh, no question. Hey, Arnie, what's up, baby? Hey, man. Uh, what's happening? How you doing, bro? How's it going? Oh, hey, what's happening, man? All right. <laughs> Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man, please. Oh, yeah. Hello, how are you? All right, man. Peace and love, man. Yeah, how are you? Come up in here, man. Come up in here, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, my man. Hey, beautiful. Hi. How are you? Good, good. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you, Elsa. Oh. What's happening, brother? Hey, everything is silly. What, what can I say, man? Hey, Just man. throw it in the iron and buy the quad. Yeah, you set up? Yeah, I'm going to set up right We're going to interview yeah. you some more later on, okay? Oh, by all means, man. No. Thank you. More to come. Stay tuned. sick mother. Her mother was actually dying. 
and she moved back to Wilmington to be with her sick mother. And she decided that she would become a staunch member of the church. Everybody knew her in this church, a very historic church called St. Luke Methodist Church in Wilmington. She was known as the lady who would cook fine, elaborate meals to people. And she would serve them at the church. That name was given to it by racists. So I, I mean, if, if, it's been, if you're going to different names, let me digress a minute. It's been called jazz, jungle music. It's been called uh, nigger music. We call everything except what it is. It's the most sophisticated music in the world. That was a digression. Uh, as a way of introducing myself to the class, I would hang out, hand out a biographical leaflet paid from a biographical, like on me. And, and so the members, I, I would give it to them, to the members of the class because I wanted them, I was teaching Western civilization. As a way of introduction, I would ask them to pattern their bio after my bio. So Mrs. Mrs. Morgan, I knew her as, as Helen Morgan. Erroneously, people have, 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 have cited her as Helen Moore, M-O-O-R-E. Or Helen Moore, M-O-R-E. Um, but her name in my class was Helen Morgan. So she said, when she read the bio, my bio, she said, oh, I love jazz. My husband was a jazz musician. So I said, really? You know, I didn't know too many Morgans. I, mean, I knew Frank Morgan, but he was West Coast. And I could tell she had been to the city. So she said, yes. I said, what was your husband's name? She said, Lee. And I said, Lee Morgan, the trumpet player? And she said, yes, that was my husband. And she kind of looked at me real funny. You know what I said? Oh, um, I sure would like to interview you one day. So she said, I'll think of her. And it took her six years. So finally, we were at this festival, and she just came up to me and handed me her address and her phone number. So we set the interview up for February. 1996. I had known her since about 1989. She had taken at least two of my classes. I teach Western Civil Rights. So we set it up for February 1996, which is ironic because that was you know, we were still with her. And we, she talked. I, because I've done all history projects before. I did, you know, I've done, I did all history projects with the Wilmington Ten. I interviewed over 100 people. I just set the tape recorder in front of her, let, let her talk. And she just talked and talked. As a matter of fact, what I will do, if you don't mind, I will play some of the, uh, some of the interviews. Uh, but I'll play some of them. Um, so she talked, and, and apparently she knew I knew who she was. Because right away she just started talking about it. I'll tell you what the first thing she said, by, by, by the way, I don't want to just talk and talk. I, you know, I'm going to be some kind of guy. Or if you want to ask any questions, you can. Uh, the first thing she said was, you know, Larry, I don't know if I loved him or if I thought of him as my possession. This is what she said. That's the first thing she said. So I, right away I said, did you? She said, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I loved him. Or not. And then I thought to myself, I said, well, here's a lady almost 20 years after she did it and, or knew him, and she still hadn't decided whether she loved him or not. I thought that was very strange. So she just talked and talked about I noticed that every time she would talk about New York, you know, she got excited. So I, that's when I turned to tape record. And that, that, that's the gist of the conversation that I have with her. Matter of fact, I'd like to. Uh, Sister, Sister Jennifer, Jennifer. Yes, yes, sir. Could you read this for me? I don't know if you have a, uh, a, the most recent Billy the Boy. Collins to come as close as he did. In the late 1980s, long after she had left New York and the jazz world, more than Morgan took an adult education class in Wilmington, North Carolina, taught by Larry Rennie Thomas, a jazz historian and radio announcer. In the film, Thomas described his shock as discovering that she had once been Lee Morgan's wife. 
especially since Thomas probably, unlike some viewers, knew that Moore had fired the gun that ended Lee Morgan's life. He invited her to participate in an interview. Eight years later, she finally agreed, just one month before she died. Throughout I Call 10, Morgan Collins plays the tape of more that Thomas recorded her voice. I met Mouse, nasty, nasty, proves the film. Second most urgent after Morgan's triumph. She took Morgan in at his lowest. To unreliable to gig, he turned up at her apartment in the dead of the winter after hocking his coat. That's, that's fine, sister. That's okay. Thank you so much. Okay, that was in the latest book. Even okay, next time, I mean, Sarah Bond married a guy named Wayman Reed. She, Sarah Bond married about five times. So she married a guy named Wayman. She had this thing for trumpet players. He was a trumpet player, and he was from Fayetteville. So I'm going to play. It's called the Carolina Jazz Connection. So I ask myself a lot of times, did I love him? Did you? I asked myself that, Harry. Mm. I did. I. I thought he was my possession. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Was it a 50 50 relationship? I think he. I, well, until that, this girl, and I, part of that might, I think about that, part of that might have been my fault. Mm -hmm. Because I might have stopped being. I might have started being too possessive or too much as a mother. Mm -hmm. well, you, were, you were somewhat a little bit older. Yes, old, and because old. Morgan, I was much older than Morgan, because Morgan, what, what, what did he say something? I think he was 30 something. Uh, born in 1938 and died in 72. Uh-huh. And see, I was in my 50s. When you first met him? Mm -hmm. Four days, uh, late four days. So you you thought you thought you you even thought about you being yeah. too possessive? Yeah, I've thought about it because it was like to me I think to when I thought about it, like I made him. I hear you. You know. That's right. I brought you back. That's right. And you belong to me. That's right. And you are not supposed to go out there and do this. He, was, he started seeing another one. Yeah, you know, so he started seeing this girl. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it now, see, I was on him by using so much cocaine. Mm -hmm. And she was using cocaine with him. Right. You understand what I mean? And you I was, weren't using it. Uh -uh. Right. I was so, on him. She was so shooting has, cocaine with him. Oh See, God. he was shooting it. Shooting. So yeah. And so you, shoot. right. And so you know how that is. That's pop, 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 pop. Yeah, it's with that, crazy. You know, right. that's so, crazy because yeah. it ain't going it, it no, to last you but a, but a hot right. minute. So you, you know? just have to keep going. Right. On. It don't last you but a hot minute snowing. Right. And you last you that when you shoot it. Right. You know? So I knew that because he'd be there with me, get it. And I see you, 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 you shoot, you using too much cocaine. You yeah, it'll take you right away. Right, I see you, you using too much. You, you're not eating, you know, and you, and your nerves, and you using. And I guess I was, I'm beginning to sound like a mother. And this girl, she had been after him a long time, but. When he was out there strung out, she wasn't. The black girl? The black girl, yeah. She wasn't, you know. Right. But once he got himself straight. She, she really wanted him. She wanted him. And then they were hanging out. She was, she, you know, he had somebody to play. Were they about play. the same age? Yeah, I guess about that. I would imagine, I guess so. And they would, uh. Did you know her? Yeah, I knew her. But. Hanging around, and uh, I'd go in the bathroom, and they would be in it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I said, "You better be careful, girl," you know. Mm -hmm. I'd 
so much that you better be careful you know and I stopped going to the clubs Oh, you stopped going. I stopped going. But he was still living. He, he, he was still together. We were still together, yeah. We were still together. He stopped coming home. And I went through a thing with that. I went through a tremendous mental thing. You know, you know, you know, tried to commit suicide. Really? Till I pulled myself out of that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> When I went to the hospital, they pumped my stomach out. Oh, goodness. I pulled myself out of that completely. Well, he know? had left the house at that point. No, he was at the house. I don't know whether I was trying to kill myself or not. I just scared him. But I, all I knew, I went in and told him to get me to the hospital because I had to stick this point. So, what no, I think I changed my mind, you know. And, uh, I was sit down and we'd have to talk, you know, and I was still carrying on this business, you know, and I was still dancing and talking. And I said, you know, what the thing we need to do is, is separate. Mm -hmm. You go ahead on and be with her, and I still do your, your business, but what you doing? I said, I'm not one of those women that can talk to my I'm the main woman and you got somebody outside. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not built that Well, it's in the movie. I didn't see the movie yet. Yeah. Well, well, he used it in the movie. Well, let, me, let me play this. Let me play this. This is when she asked me. This is the excerpt that I used to play. This is when she asked me shot. She was going on the car on the mall. Mm. And I ran over there and I, I was so sorry. Oh, you know. And he said to me, he said, honey, I know you didn't mean to do this. He said that. Uh-huh. He said, I know you did me. He said, I'm sorry, too. He said, he's sorry. Uh-huh. He said, I'm sorry, too. Okay. She, he, she said that when she saw him. She was on the car on the mall. Mm. And I ran over there, and I, I was so sorry. Oh, you know. And he said to me, he said, honey, I know you didn't mean to do this. He said that. Uh-huh. He said, I know you did me. He said, I'm sorry, too. He said, he's sorry. Uh-huh. He said, I'm sorry, too. Okay. What he heard was, uh, Helen, Lisa, why did you make me do this? That's what Paul West heard. Now, I've read several articles on this. And, no, I, I heard an interview with Billy, uh, Billy Hart. And Billy Hart said that he heard, Billy Hart, first thing Billy Hart said is, <laughs> now I wasn't there. You know, that's the first thing he said. See, all this stuff is online. I think, uh, uh, the computer's a fascinating thing. There's a whole lot of negativity about it, but it's a fascinating thing. You know, I tell people all the time, they say, well, I don't know this, I don't know that. I say, well, anybody who was a dummy these days, all they got to do is Google. There's no excuse. Billy Hart did an interview. Billy Hart said that he, someone told him that when she, he was laying on the ground and she walked over there, he said that, quote, unquote, and, excuse me, ladies, he said that he Morgan said, Get away from me, you dirty bitch. So these are the three stories, right? As a historian, I've always found out that it's her side, his side, and the truth is somewhere in the middle. It's your side, their side, and the truth is somewhere in the middle. So I, and, and this, this story has all kind of paradoxes. Um, she, I guess paradoxes is a good word, yeah. She, she had her first child at 13. She had another child at 14. She left them and moved. She, 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 she comes from a, a, a little town across the river, Charlotte. He's actually in the movie. He told me that Helen told him that she stabbed him in the back because he beat her up all the time, right? now. Those are two other stories, <laughs> you know, so um, I have problems with what he told me because um, if his family knew that she killed him, they would have taken her back to the yard. It's kind of logical, I don't know, I, don't, I, I assume they did an autopsy on her. They found gentlemen, a scholar, and a servant of the people. I'm not an entrepreneur. This movie was in Toronto. It's been to 
hotel ride, they premiered in Rome, they went to London. If you Google, I call them Morgan.com, it's going to be in LA on the 31st. Uh, it's going to be in Santa Fe, Vancouver. The movie is on fire. Never in a million years would I have ever thought that an interview I conducted with Ms. Helen Moore would turn into a movie. Or that I would have written a book. Any questions? It's like, to me, this is my logic. I mean, you shot a cat while he's working. That's like, that's like a mailman trying to deliver mail, and his wife comes on, on his route and shoots him. And a lot of these cats were at peace when they were up on the stage. So she took him out on his gig. That's the only logic. I mean, I mean when I first published it, I got all kind of, especially his, who I call hero worshipers. You know, for Lee Morgan, they just love Lee Morgan, and you know, but I mean, like I said, I'm, I am a historian, right? I'm not on his side, I'm not on her side. I'm on the side of history. I realize the historical significance of this woman talking to me, and that's why I put the tape story in front of her. So it's been a fascinating experience for me. I look forward to the future. Uh, I was, I was I, when I was in LA. I was contacted. Well, I actually, this guy contacted me when I was here before they showed the movie in October. And this guy came next to me and gave me his card. He said, "I run a film production company in Culver City, and we have to produce 11 or 12 movies. And we want to do a movie on this story." He said, we were actually going to do this movie before we found out about the documentary. I don't know if I believe that or not. But this is what he said. So when I was in LA, I made an appointment. I talked to them. They have already talked to um, Viola Davis. This is what they told me. They talked to Viola Davis to play the part of Helen Morgan. They haven't written, they haven't written, they haven't written a script yet. And they haven't found a director. And they're looking for somebody to play Lee Warren. They're thinking about this Nigerian brother who was, was in this flick on Selma, who, who part, uh, portrayed uh, Martin Luther King. But when you hear about this movie, people say that your ears heard it first here at Susan Bush. Here on Amsterdam. Any more questions? What's your relation to Casper? This is what Helen told me. Now, in the movie, the girl doesn't say that. You know, that's why I said, I said there's three sides to this story. So Helen says, Lee says, the girl said, what are you doing with her? So Lee says, I'm not with this bitch. I'm just telling her to leave me alone. So at that point, she said, she slapped him. And he pushed her out of the club with no coat or anything. Told the bouncer not to let her back in. All right? No coat. When he pushed her out of the club, she must have felt fallen on the ground, snow. And she said, the gun fell out. That's what she said. So she said she picked up the gun and walked back toward the entrance of the club. And she said, the, the bouncer met her at the door, and the bouncer said, Miss Morgan, I hate to tell you this, but Lee told me not to let you back in. So she said, oh, I'm coming in. He put up the gun like that. He said, well, yes, you are. So he moved out of the way. And so that's when she went in and shot. So she said he was coming at her with such a raised look. And she didn't know what he was going to do, and that's when she said she shot. So to answer your question, you're correct. If she hadn't gone to the club, he wouldn't have got shot in that club, but I don't know if he, he might have got shot somewhere else. I don't know. It's, it's in the animal. Which, 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 which,
I'm glad to that. I, I never knew that. All these years, I spoke to Billy Harper about this incident many times. And I have never once heard that Lee Morgan could have been saved. I heard that interview with Billy, Billy Hart. I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, questions about this whole thing. Uh, but one thing uh, I was shocked that I never knew, all right, was that Lee Morgan would still be alive today if there wasn't that much snow on the ground. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, mm -hmm. successful? I'd like to know the flash. Yes, flash. Flash. No, I don't know. I have to check what it's going to Take my phone. Take my phone. Yeah, my man. I have my phone. Oh, I don't care about you. What? No, it's all right. Keep your shades on. You know him for keeping your shades on, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everyone in the universe. I enjoy that interview with Mr. Larry. I enjoy the interview with you, Mr. Larry Thomas. Thank you, sir. Oh my goodness! You know, you told me some things that about Helen that I didn't know. Okay. What? You know, but one thing is, she was very good in taking care of business, and also to, you know, it's more like a, I don't know, I don't know, I consider it as a love story or, or not a love story, but it's uh, it's an interesting story, yes. and the questions that were asked of you know, uh, you know, the people who brought you uh, asking questions about him. Um, You are phenomenal, my brother. What can I Thank say? Thank you, brother. Thank you. I should make you my agent. Yeah. And, and, and one thing, you're very modest. Yes. That's the only way to go, bro. That's all. You have to be humble about this. I, I mean, uh, I'm not that kind of cat. Are you going to still continue keeping Lee Morgan's memory alive? Oh, uh, yeah. I guess the answer to that question is yes, but I plan to work on other musicians as well. Oh, who, 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 who you got playing down the pipe? My next book is going to be about the Carolina Jazz Connection. Do you? I was like, well, who, who's, who's that Jared Carolina Jazz Connection that you're going to be working on? Well, I'm going to include a lot of folks, but I think I'm going to concentrate on John Cole, Trent Thelonious Monk, Nina Simone, and, uh, and Max Rose, but they're Percy Heat, a great bassist. Yes, born yes. In North Carolina. Yes. Um, His brothers as well, or just him? Percy was born there, and that next year they moved to Philadelphia. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I actually know, I've been knowing Jimmy for years. Yeah, Jimmy's very good. Jimmy went to high school. What apartment was he in? And with my parents. I believe that uh, John Coltrane son studied with rap. Studied with who? Jimmy. Oh, I'm sure he did. But there, that's there, that's there, gonna be your name. Billy Taylor, Doctor Billy Taylor. Doctor Billy Taylor. Yes. Was born in Greenville, North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. So Carol Vick, saxophone player. Yes. Was born in uh, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. That's so gonna long, that's, long list. that's gonna be quite a. Woody Shaw, the trumpet player, was born in Longburg, North Carolina. Oh. He didn't go over. So you're gonna have the jazz. Oh, that's gonna be a, the Carolina Jazz Connection. Yeah, but see, the fascinating thing about that is that, that, that it was a part of the great black migration during the uh, early 20s. These people were moving out of the South because it was very horrible conditions. Not only segregation, I call it American apartheid. The segregation and a lot of them were being lynched. Duke Ellington's father was from a place called Lincolnton, North Carolina. Lincolnton, okay. He's had a high rate of, 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 of black male lynchings. So he left Lincolnton and moved to Washington. You know, I always think about many times like you know, like everyone, you know, Sunday morning, you know, and especially have segregation going wild. And then everyone said, you know, in the church, they made a law watch between me and the wiry absent one for another. Amen. And after that, they took, they looked like they went, they left there and went down to, to the courthouse and, 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 and was lynching us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're lynching us now as we speak. We just oh. don't hear about it. No. Sometimes we don't feel it around our road. I don't think, I don't, as, as a historian, yes. this is my personal opinion from research, I don't think anything has changed. I think, it I think it's always constant. You know. Well, we would like for you to keep us in 
keep the LMS show and the extra extra show informed because we would love to you know we would love to um, yeah, well I'm working on it now I'm working on my book now and hopefully you know I'll be able to finish with when this kind of dies down a little bit and I think the Hollywood people want to do a movie, so I don't know what they're going to do. They're going to have to call me. I'm not going to call them. <laughs> no, no. Like that. So, I mean, I didn't, like I said before, I didn't ask for any of this. It just fell in my lap. You know, many folks, I, I, I interview a lot of book authors, and some book authors tell me, tell me say, well, you know, I would like my book to be made into a movie. Yes. And and um and you know and, and you never thought about it. No. They they think about it and sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes worse you lose control of your art too. Well okay. that's what I'm saying. I don't I don't you know because um, I mean anything can happen. I, I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm not really interested in making a lot of money because I live a simple life. Uh, but I realized the first thing I would have to do is get a lawyer. If I'm dealing with people like that, yes, because, um, they take advantage of people. I mean, yes, they, yes, they do. The people who, who they're taking advantage of. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm not a dummy. No. So if I do get involved in the Hollywood people, I, you know, I would, I would have to get along. On that note, I would like to thank you so much. Yes. And you, you, you're the man. What can I say? Yeah, right. No, I'm and not you're the very much. You're, you're the man. <laughs> you're the man, bro. Well, thank you so much. Yes, sir. All right. Thank, thank you, you for allowing me to be on your show. Oh, it's my pleasure. It was really my pleasure. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. From Sisters Uptown Bookstore and Cultural Center. Also, too, we thank Sister Jennifer, too. By all means. This is Lenny B. for the LMS Extra Extra Show. And author, Larry Thomas. The lady. And this will always live with me. The lady who shot Lee Morgan. And we'll see you soon. And take it down.